And oldness continues. I just want to point out, we're getting way more done by distracting ourselves with stupid stories than we do normally when we're trying to come up with witty banter. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Anyway, so. Good times. But, uh, yeah, no, like I said, I like I was saying in the last episode, I didn't really do, uh, you know, own a lot of movies, but we, we I watched a ton of stuff. I liked watching movies and whatnot. And I... <sighs> I li- I didn't mind, and and this might be because of my age thing. You know, people were people are so impatient now. Every once in a while, like channels like Fox and stuff like that, on Saturdays would play, you know, like the movie Real Genius or Young Guns or something like that. Right. And even though even though there was commercials, I, I really didn't mind. Even though it was heavily you know edited for time and you know stuff like that, I didn't mind watching that stuff. I, I really, of course, now I'm at the point where. Uh, I uh, I watch the last half of movies. I like there's some movies that I've just I've I've seen like the beginning of like once, and I've seen the end of like a thousand times. Right. So. Right. But uh. Yeah, there are, there are a few. I I try to finish a movie when I watch it. Just mm-hmm. Because. Yeah. You know, because I feel I that's how I feel. Um, but. There are quite a few movies that I've just, especially lately, that I've been watching. I kind of get into, and then I lay down on the couch, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be... And I'm out with the light. <laughs> well, no, I'm the opposite. I may flipping through TV and be like, oh, this movie's on, and turn it on, and watch it from wherever it's at. I've seen it. Right. Watch it from wherever it's at till the end. <clears throat> um, now, I do stuff that, like, I know that, that Heather finds kind of weird, because... One big thing that I got into, because I I was very much a kid of TV. I grew up not only as a little kid watching, you know, like the cartoons and stuff, but even like when I was a teenager, I was home. I, I, I just loved sitting in front of the TV and watching, you know, like Cheers and Night Court and, you know, a bunch of those like 80s TV shows into the 90s TV shows and whatnot. Right. Uh, and I remember probably... I want to say 90, around 96, 97, 98, somewhere in that window, because it was right around the time Pink Cacti was born, um, I got a DVR from the cable company. So this was um, post-TiVo coming out, Mm -hmm. but it was actually through Cox Cable, and uh, which which, is who who are the, the providers here. And... Even now, where you have so many people that are, are what are you working on, by the way? Uh, I just made a core sample drill. Okay, cool, cool. Um, even though it, it has kind of got to the point, and I, and I know that you're a big believer in this, where kind of the, the days of cable for a lot of people are over. Um, I still love it. I still love every stinking inch of it. I it's it's not that I, I'm not a fan of cable. I do like cable. I just liked it better, uh, you know, when last you, decade when your dad when your dad was paid for it. Well, not not only that that I no, will admit, no. yeah that's that's part of okay. it. Um, part of it was yeah I I, I preferred not paying for my own cable. Yeah. Because right. I tried cable for a bit on my own, and yeah, that is prohibitively expensive. Yeah. Um, but. Really, more, uh, it's more that, it's like the, the shows that are out there that are offered that I like to watch are not available in my area or in my price range. Like, or they just aren't available anymore. Like, for example, History Channel. Okay. The, I remember, I remember back way back when when I was a little boy, when History Channel actually had history shows on it. Okay. And I liked the history shows. I liked watching the Civil War documentaries and learning about the you know the 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 the, the theoretical history of mankind and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't like watching shows about pawn stars. <laughs> But why, Snoop? Because it's trash TV. 
But Snoop. There's already a channel for all that called True TV, which is anything but true. Uh, True TV has become the Impractical Jokers Network. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I figure that's the case now. Oh, look, a copper I, vein right here. Nice. I, lo I love that show, by the way. Uh, Impractical Jokers, I it's, it's good. I just can't get into it. Uh, I love it. Anyways, but, it, um, it, I, that's, I, not, that's neither here nor there. So. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy the Discovery Channel. Okay. Well, I yeah, prefer space, watching the Discovery Channel. Space Nerd, we talked about this. Yeah, I prefer watching the Discovery Channel when it had, you know, scientific stuff on it. Like yeah. talking about you know molecular biology and the crazy stuff that the crazy creatures and stuff that are found in the real life world. But Mike Rowe, I liked Dirty Jobs because he goes into detail about the whole thing. He goes to more than just oh this is a really disgusting dirty job that someone has to do. Yeah. He goes into and talks about it and also shows how it's done and goes into the, de the like how it came to be, all the history of it, that sort of thing. He went to more detail and I'm okay with that. I like that. But there are other shows on Discovery Channel that should not be on Discovery Channel. Okay. It's been so long I can't recall one right now. Because I well, yeah, yeah, anymore, and, and, but... and 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 this is this is where I really think old guy us is going to kick in. I just like my I like my Discovery Channel like I like my Discovery Channel. <laughs> I, I I I will oh, say wow, this. it's an oil sample right here. Nice. I, I will. Can you do it inside the uh, ship? Um, you should see I mean, if we have any in because it's in the chunk. So you could put the drill thing in the ship. Oh my god, let's try that. Let's take try take that. out the farm. We don't need the farm anymore. Put it back there. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna. Just put like this... real life, I'm really trying to avoid going outside. So. Okay, let's put this right. Um, yeah, right here in the farm. All right. So. Uh, what am I missing? the middle here but um like know. here's here's another here's another good example for you well okay all right yeah i, I what old, let me get my old old person us because ticking out and then i like i like it way back when more because of nostalgia classes than really anything else but yeah you know um but i will say this <laughs> I, I, yeah, I i it works yeah sorry yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> put an oil derrick right in the farm <laughs> But uh, Man, do it. It's not political commentary. I don't know what is. But uh, I will say, um, mm, I okay. was never into old movies. Mm. So like AMC was kind of dumb to me. Okay. Um, but uh, oh, I need to watch them. Um, so yeah, I could really care less about uh. Like AMC and stuff like that, Turner Broadcasting Network and stuff. But I, you know, I like The Walking Dead, so yeah. that works out, you know, on AMC on American Movie Classics. And that's the funny part. Now, here's where we can have the the old guy rant. I'm young enough, or I'm old enough to remember when I was young when MTV played music videos. I remember that too. Okay. One of the uh, first music videos I saw on MTV was um, uh, Money for Nothing. Yep. The old uh, CG style, the boxy CG. Yeah, the uh, Dire Straits song. Yeah. Money for nothing and chicks for free. <laughs> I remember seeing a uh, video killed the radio star, which was actually, now I'm not saying when it first premiered, but that was actually the very first music video that was ever on MTV, which I love the irony of it being, you know, video, video killed, killed the, ra the radio still was the first music video ever played on MTV. It's now, a lot of people may not know this, especially the younger people. VH1 was also a music video channel. Yeah, it was like but, what, Video Hits 1 or something like that? Yeah, that's what it, it stands for. So there's a lot of these channels that people just know the names of, but they don't know, you know, what because they're... all their, their reality shows and all that stuff, is, is so, it's all reality shows nowadays. And it's all the same thing. Well, because they're cheap and they bring in people. So They're, you know, they're right? cheap, they're yeah, e easy, to, easy to make. They don't take any talent. No. Because let's be honest, if you're on a reality show, you have no talent. Well, the biggest thing is they take no script. Yes. So the, 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 the real way that they save their money is the fact that they, uh, that they, um, they don't have to pay writers. You don't generally don't, you, your director is closer to like a cinematographer than a director. You know, yeah. they, he's more of a, you know, 
all right, camera four, all right, camera three. In those shows, probably the biggest job is the editor. Because yes, because the editor is the one that that puts you know, the whole thing real, together. Well, but really ties it together to really make the drama, you know. But anyway, so uh, but yeah, VH1 was more contemporary music, i.e., parent music. So it was it was almost like it was like the stuff that was cool in the early ni- 80s it video wise is what you saw stuff like that on VH1 in the like late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. uh, because you know v- MTV became like you know boy bands and stuff like that so um I can't stand boy bands yeah so it was music television video hits one AMC is American Mu- movie classics uh, NBC is National Broadcasting Company. Uh, CNN ABC, is the, the, the corporate news network. Cable news network. Cable news. Sorry, network. my dad calls it the communist news network. Of course, yeah. His, his Snoop, Snoop and his dad are very different people. Um, very different. And uh, yeah, uh, True TV used to be Court TV. Mm-hmm. Now. Court TV was huge because in the 90s, and this was like a big early thing for reality shows, in the 90s you had what really kicked it off was the O.J. Simpson thing. Well, O.J. Simpson. Oh, yeah, the O.J. Simpson trial. That's right. It was O.J. Simpson, the Menendez brothers, all of those were were very much uh, what made court TV necessary. So for any of you guys that were either too young or weren't even born yet, Heard you, you know, I'm sure you heard about the O.J. Simpson trial. That whole trial took, like, it was a long... I don't think it was quite a year, but it was pretty damn close. And I'm not joking. They allowed cameras into the... Uh, oh, do we actually have... Do we have oil in the ship? Nice. Yeah, look, see? There's nice. seven and a half million buckets of it. Um, And honestly, that's what that... It was either... They were showing the, the stuff live... They were showing it like recaps or people were talking about it. So a channel literally just it was the O.J. Simpson murder trial network for like a year. It was crazy. Yep. And then, of course, once it it ended, everybody was like, <laughs> well, now we wait. what do we do now? We've already bought all the furniture. Damn it. Um, oh, do I want to try? Let's start showing some other salacious stuff. Well, and like I said, there was the Menendez brothers. And I know there was a couple others that were. uh that were uh, highly televised for that. So, right. right. How bad is this one going to be? I got that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I, I, I know that the the advent of reality TV really started with um, at least reality TV as we know it. I, the big contributor, from what I've heard, <clears throat> is um, is cops. Because cops was huge. <clears throat> yeah, there was uh, always it was, cops going on. Yeah, it was cops. Um. You had, okay, so you had things like when I grew up that I guess you could technically say were the, like, the grandparents to reality TV, kind of. Like, uh, they had a lot of shows called Real People or Amazing People or Look at These Crazy People, you know. Yeah. And, um, but cops got into it, and then, uh, we're going to, how many of these going to need? We're going to need two, four, six, eight, and 16 of these. Holy crap. Um, anyways, so yeah, cops, uh, was a big one. Honestly, the big one, the big one that really kicked off reality show as we know it, um, was real world. The That's first right. season of real, real world. world. Yeah. Uh, man. that was a pretty big deal. Okay. So for, and, and, and I, oh, you're already making iron plates. Nice. Um, I'm sure most people have heard of real world and they made road rules, which is just real world on the freeway or whatever. But real world, when it started out, and actually a lot of people, I don't know if they've had a real world in a long time, but basically it was a reality show. But, and I, I would put it closer to like kind of keeping up with the Kardashians. It wasn't a competition show. So it wasn't like Survivor. It wasn't like, you know, Big Brother or any of those ones. It was literally, they took different people, tried to get people that were completely different from each other socially, economically. Um, they, in essence, wanted to get people that were that were going to fight. That's that's what they wanted. People right? that would yeah, have conflict with each other. Exactly. So they... Uh, 
So you know, totally yeah. not skeezy thing to do. Yeah. And the biggest thing that happened was in season one, there was a guy named Pedro. Okay. And Pedro, uh, now you got to keep in mind, this was early 90s. Uh, Pedro had AIDS. And that was, and, and, and I know people nowadays, like you really don't hear people talking about it. I don't necessarily think it's cured, but I don't think it's necessarily the crazy death sentence it used to be. Um, it's a... Yeah, it's still being worked on, but I think it's yeah. considered a manageable. Well, I know, I know, I know. Like Magic Johnson had it, and he's had, or he has it, and he's had it for a long time. Right. Like he, he got it like 15 years ago, and is still going fine. But in in basically in the early, early to mid 80s, if you got AIDS, you you died. There there was no cure. They actually they they called it cancer for a long time. Um, because what they didn't realize was the immune system was being broken down, and then things like cancer were a, a lot of people didn't die from AIDS. They died from they, things that AIDS took they, advantage of. Well, they died from a cold because they had no immune system. They died from the flu. They died from, from you know, whatever, you know. Uh, you know, cancer, you know, there wasn't as much white blood cells to fight off cancerous blood cells, so, you know, that kind of stuff. So, anyways, but one guy on there, and that's really... And to be honest with you, most of the time, people don't remember a lot of the other people that were on that show. But they remember Pedro. And he actually passed away after the show was over. But he had to kind of come out to his roommates after they were already in there. And that was a, that was a big deal, you know, because... And, and it really educated a lot of people. It, re- it educated a lot of young people. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's a, it's a condition that's out there. That, yeah. Um... And, and the ramifications of the social stigma of, oh, dude, you have AIDS. Yeah, well, and it also really pushed the whole, okay, you can't get it from a toilet seat. You can't get it from yeah. high-fiving. You can't get it because, you know. It can't you be know, transferred aside from. Sexually know, transmitted, yeah. You can't. Blood you can't, or you can't, you can't, bodily you can't fluid it. swapping. Yeah, I don't even think you can get it from kissing. As right. As far as I know, you can't get it from kissing, so. But yeah, so yeah, that's basically the concept. There's a disclaimer here: we are not medical professionals. No, 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 no. Um, really, we have to tell them that. But anyways, yeah. that was the big thing about the show was was the yeah. fact that that he basically had to come out to people he lived with, and there were a couple people in there that were still at the time very scared of it, understandably, mm-hmm. right? At this point, you know. Ten hundred thousand un- unknowing. People. It's it's an unknown thing, or it's still largely unknown and yeah. terrified of it. Yeah, yeah. So, but that was really kind of the the godfather to the whole thing was the uh, was the real world at least in in a lot of the shows we have now. And then of course you know they came out with like Survivor is technically on like season thirty five. But they have two seasons a year. Hey, Modi, so, we're yeah. mining ship oil. <laughs> Are we? Holy ship. <laughs> so th- this is the not one big non-realistic thing about this guy, is it just has to be in the chunk. So, yeah, apparently there there's black gold in them there laboratory blocks. Is that why you build your bases out of these? Naturally, on to you. I'm an oil on to you. On to you. But uh, yeah. So, like I said, I mean, I don't know. My the reason I was kind of bringing this up was the fact is, is that we do have, even though we're friends now and we're into a lot of the same stuff now, there was pretty much a generational gap. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not personally. I don't look back at the '90s as a whole. As super positive, and I'm not getting dark. Like, oh, my high school was hard, and I was very moody. No, 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 no. Like, I think the music in the '80s was better than the '90s. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of the I movies. Agree with you on that. I think a lot of the movies in the yeah, but we're talking. We're even between that. We're talking about different things because you like like classic rock, and I'm I'm talking like even the weird like Culture Club, like Depeche Mode. It's not stuff I listen to. But it's stuff that, like, when I hear, like, a Cure song come on, I'll be like, oh, that's adorable. Such easier times. 
I'm not going to go pay to see like Robert Smith scream when he's 60 or anything like that. So, but, um, which by the way, I, I, uh, for a while, uh, my kid's doctor when they were little, uh, was an old guy named Robert Smith. And, uh, I would always try and make cure references to him and he had no clue what I was talking about. And that made it actually more fun. So. <laughs> Can we all just agree that uh, Nickelback is awful? I just want to put I'll, that out there. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I could pick. Oh, damn it. I just my drill now. I don't think I could pick out a Nickelback song from a lineup. All, I'll all be, I know I'll, is the meme. Look at this graph. And then that's that's all I'll, I recall. I'll be dead honest with you. For the most part, I have disliked radio music probably since the beginning of the 90s. When I, when I got into the 90s, and I'll admit this, and I'm, I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to this. When I got into the 90s is when I kind of got into, like, college rock. I mean, I was in high school, but, like, college rock, alternative, grunge, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, I, I was a fan of, like, you know, Nirvana long before they got famous and, and stuff like that. But, you know, like, old R.E.M., like Orange Crush and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the end of the world as we know it. Great stuff like that. Like weird, that. weird bands like Lush and Blur back in the day. The Violent Femmes, all of that stuff I liked. And then you know later that kind of led into getting like punk rock stuff that was. But uh, yeah, yeah, just like just weird stuff. Like oh, go to track nine. It's a guy just smacking his left butt cheek against a tin can for 45 minutes. You got to hear it. There's a breakdown that'll blow your mind. I'm not I'm not that pretentious. But yeah, I like a lot of stuff. Like I said, like the Violet Femmes, the Pixies. The Pixies are great. Um, offshoots of that, the Breeders and stuff like that. So a lot of like, you know, multi-syllable, one-named bands. But um, so yeah, so the stuff that I liked in the 90s wasn't played on the radio. It was you know, in sync and Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears and I could care less about a lot of stuff. And even like a lot of the kind of medley bands, I, the, I, I, every morning I wake up, I sit up in bed and I think to the first thing I think to myself is somebody once told me <laughs> no, the world is going to. Oh, sorry. OK, that's not what I think, but I'm not going to tell you what I think because it's not going to be better than what you just said. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. No, there's nothing else to say. Shut up. The video's over. <laughs> God damn it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up, questions, comments, because it's over. Stop laughing. Uh, put it down in the comment section. Uh, whoever's view you're watching, make sure you check out both our videos. I want you to finish the rest of my stories from now on. <laughs> focus. Anyways, uh, if you guys want to talk yourself and Snoop and the rest of the squad, chit chat oh, our Discord, God, hang God. out in our three squad servers, have a fun, safe place to hang out while helping support us. Go check out our Patreon down below. And if you want to get your very own server, just like the ones the squad uses for all of our Minecraft needs or a slew of other games, go check out Host Havoc. Even if you're just going to browse to see what they offer, what their prices are, make sure you use our link. That way they know you're coming from one of our videos. And until the next episode, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.